So, welcome to This Week with the Communist Party. Scott, how is it? It, um, it. Some, of, some of it's good, some of it's bad. I mean, uh, certainly the Israeli elections uh, didn't have a favorable result. It looked like, you know, Netanyahu's power might finally have been uh, broken, but... Um, that Isn't was, that boy under indictment? He's, uh, I think he's about to be, yeah. Um, uh, though some of his backers are arguing that uh, even if he were indicted, he, he could still continue as prime minister, so. Um, I see, I see. In, in the United States, at least in Israel, you can indict a city yeah. prime minister. In this country, the Justice Department says no. <laughs> No, but in the Sudan, there were huge protests and uh, it looks like all of the political prisoners and including the leadership of the Communist Party of the Sudan were released. Um, and uh, so we'll see how that's a positive there were occupation. That's, that's wonderful news because the, the repression that the, the party faced there was intense and extremely brutal. They were in their version of whose street, our streets. They were occupying capital, military outposts, and so on. It's the streets outside of them. Yeah. The military refused to fire on and disperse the crowd. So that's a big thing. But we have our own problems here. Justice Department uh, the Attorney General saying that um, the Spying was taking place uh, against uh, Mr. Trump and Trump saying it's treasonous. And mm -hmm. then you got that business uh, at DHS. What's up yeah. with that? Uh, well, the, the, yeah, the, the, the purge of the senior leadership, you know, which was already horrible. Uh, right. they, they, these, these, these were not, you know, good people that were there, but they weren't, enough and weren't violent enough and weren't lawless enough for, for, the for Trump's inner circle, and so now they're gone. And uh, Trump is apparently insisting on a, a much harder, uh, much more violent border policy, um, including something called uh, binary choice, where uh, people who arrive at the border, families, uh, would either uh, be separated from their children, or uh, if they don't want to be separated, would have to waive all humanitarian rights, including uh, the right to uh, a hearing uh, before a judge and would basically be uh, detained indefinitely. Indefinite detention. Wow, that's, that's isn't that unconstitutional? I mean, don't... Uh, sounds like, but, but the whole basis of, of, of the Trump's, uh, the Trump uh, regime's argument is that um, the constitution doesn't apply to everybody. Which is, you know, the same argument that uh, Jim Crow made, that the Confederacy made, that you know, our position there. Like, if, if a right means yeah, it don't even apply to, from from their standpoint, people uh, sometimes uh, who are citizens of the United States. Like, you can be uh, declared if you're, uh, you know, associated with uh, an alleged terrorist organization, you you can be declared an enemy combatant. Isn't that true? And that was, and that was, in fact, under um, under Bush and under cool. Obama as well. Um, right. I remember hearing uh, Attorney General Holder uh, in a speech at, at the Northwestern Law School um, defending the policy of uh, assassinating American citizens um, without any kind of a trial by saying, "What did he say? Uh, due process does not mean judicial due process, and sometimes only the." White House has enough information to decide whether someone is a threat. Uh, well, you know, I remember that they at least gave the Nazis a trial. Yeah. At Nuremberg. Yep. Hello. I mean. Yeah. You know, this is this is. Well, and they, you know, they, they the rights of the uh, of Nazis to uh, to march and and demonstrate are consistently protected, while the 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 rights of uh, of leftists to do so are, and you know, progressive movements to do so are consistently attacked. It's it's not it's a fair play. The struggle, the struggle for uh, even limited, uh, however they may be, rights in under capitalist democracy is 
an important struggle for the working class. And sometimes, sometimes people on the left see it as, oh, that's just bourgeois liberalism, you know, and kind of minimize the importance of it. Mm -hmm. That's that's a mistake, I think. But he, and, he, and here's Lenin's point: bourgeois liberalism is contradictory. The, it has goals that cannot be achieved in the system that's supposed to achieve them. Right. Um, so we're supposed to take advantage of that contradiction. All the democratic promises of, of bourgeois liberalism, socialism can fulfill them. So we don't diminish, neglect, dismiss all of those promises and that heritage. We expand it and fulfill it. And the working class takes the lead in the fight to do so. You know, I feel like we say that every week, but it's really important. Hopefully the working class takes the lead, but it has to be organized to yeah. do so. And, and that has to be fought for. And, and that's a fundamental part of the role of the Communist Party. So look, do you think that Trump is stronger now than he's been? Or because there have been a number of reversals. I mean, the dude uh, put out the need for a new, we got a new health, we're going to be the party of health care. And then he did, <laughs> you know. I, I mean, I think he's emboldened and more aggressive now after the, you know, the Mueller report and all of that. Um, it, it does seem like he's making a much more aggressive play to kind of reshape the federal government into what he wants it to be, you know, to uh, get rid of people that he doesn't like to try to ram through uh, appointees without uh, confirmation or acting secretaries of this or that. Um, and just to trying to take some initiative, but, but aren't, aren't there like some tensions there? Some of those guys are starting to push back or you just think it's not serious? Uh, I mean, I think certainly these, um, you know, the, the Republican party the Republican establishment or whatever is not comfortable with um, how publicly and aggressively he's trying to do this. I mean, they have, they, they, they're not concerned with democracy. We know that obviously they, they have this longstanding anti-majoritarian kind of position, but they also understand the need to respect certain forms um, to go through certain channels. And, and Trump is, not doing so. And, and that makes a lot of people uneasy. Will they break with him? I don't think so. I think Lindsey Graham is like the emblem of the modern Republican Party. Well, what about the resistance uh, and the movement for uh, the anti-Trump, the front of the people? The, is it rising to the occasion in your view? Or has it I think, I think a little bit? I think it's a little bit, I think it's on its heels now. Um, I think there were a lot of people who put way too much faith in, you know, they thought that Mueller was going to be the, the give them the magic bullet or the smoking gun or, or whatever the hell you call it. Um, and it, it just didn't. And now like a lot of the, yeah, it just seems very dispersed. I'm not seeing the same level of, uh, an organization, I don't think. Well, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of activism taking place, you know, um, on the ground in different mm -hmm. states and cities. And sometimes it depends on whether or not it's covered, you know, yeah. by the uh, press. I know that, you know, there's still a big amount of interest, you know, town halls are taking mm -hmm. place. Uh, and uh, there was just one with AOC in the Bronx uh, last week or the week before on the Green New Deal. And, and uh, you know, the presidential candidates are holding big rallies and big meetings. And so well, I, I suspect, I think that the, it seems like the, uh, and this is a, a tradition that the elections have now, are now absorbing kind of everything. Um, uh, it's all about who's going to be the Democratic, and I don't think that's the correct. I mean, we don't get to choose what what struggles people embrace or don't embrace. But uh, I, I don't think the most productive conversation right now is is about who the Democratic candidate is going to is going to be. Uh, I think well, the big thing is you got to continue to fight to keep the pressure on. You know, that's that's huge. 
What's happening in the Communist Party this week? How's the pre-convention discussion going? Uh, it's uh, it's going well. Um, you know, we posted a few things to uh, Facebook and people who are subscribed to our email list. I think we'll soon be getting a, a reminder that um, this Sunday we have our third uh, online discussion of the new draft program. The topic is unity against the extreme right in the electoral arena and beyond. Um, there will be three facilitators, uh, myself, Anita Waters, and John Bactel, who's the national chair. Uh, and we'll be talking about a range of topics from the division in the ruling class to what makes up the extreme right to um, uh, international solidarity versus international uh, capitalism. OK, and how can people uh, find out about it? So uh, check your email if you're subscribed to our list. Uh, go to the website and, and uh, click on the pre pre-convention discussion page where you'll find uh, a list of seminar topics and a link to register. Um, I think a, uh, a notice went out on our text alert service. So uh, we hope to see you there. And even if you can't participate live, it's uh, Sunday at 6 to 7.30 online. Um, if you register, you'll get a recording to watch later. Um, okay, you can also find it on the front page of the, uh, of the uh, website. Um, and, and, um, so, I wanted to remind people as well that, I'm oh, sorry, Joe, I cut you off. No, go on. Uh, I wanted to remind people as well that, um, you know, pre-convention discussion is ongoing. We're getting a lot of submissions and publishing them, getting some dialogue. What we haven't gotten yet is a video submission. If you have something to say, a comment, uh, a brief, you know, whatever, something for our, our discussion, you don't have to write it. You can make a brief video. Uh, five minutes or less is what we're asking. Um, upload it to YouTube and send us a link. Uh, then we can include that in the pre-convention discussion. So we'd love to have some video uh, content as well. It makes it's you know some people prefer to read, some people prefer to watch, and you know it's good to have something for everybody. I see that some people have started to respond to uh, the question of the week, which is how to address the issue of anti-communism in your day-to-day -day work um, and uh, what people's experiences are. And that's connected to, I saw in the paper this morning that Mitch McConnell said, socialism will be made the main referendum <laughs> in the 2020 election. Yeah, I mean, that's- Let's do it, good. <laughs> um, I so. I had a, uh, I had a really interesting conversation with um, somebody, a, a waitress at a diner that I go to. Um, we were talking, started talking about the Mueller report, but then kind of went into, you know, she's more on the conservative. Well, she was, she'd been a Democrat for a long time, but she really sort of had swung to, to Trump because she felt that, you know, we needed somebody who could uh, get things done. But then we got talking a little more about like healthcare and things like that. And, you know, we were in agreement on so many things about, you know, the need for, for universal health care, uh, the need for, um, you know, free or subsidized education, the need for uh, an economy that works for working people. And at the end, she asked me if I was a Democrat. And I'm like, well, I'm actually a communist. So, you know, I'm not really, you know, I, I sometimes vote for Democrats. But, um, and she was like, oh, well, oh, I, that's, that's totally the opposite of what I believe. I'm like, well, we just had a long conversation about how we believe the same thing. Mm. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was a really interesting uh, experience. So there were a lot of points of agreement and, and, and points of identity. Yes. Uh, and I mean, there were certainly many things, you know, that, that we didn't agree on, especially in terms of in Trump in particular and his role. But uh, we agreed on a lot of things. Well, we encourage people to write in, share your, share your thoughts about it, because it's a, it, it's a big issue. And um, the right is making it an issue, but also there's been a just tremendous growth in the support for socialist mm -hmm. concepts and ideas and programs. And how to address those issues is really, you know, some people are saying, well, we shouldn't automatically reject something because of its label mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that we have to understand does it work for us is it practical you know is it useful um and uh so that's one angle of uh, uh getting to it 
And then another angle of getting to it is to address the substance of the issue and the big lie mm -hmm. has been, um, you know, wrapped around it, you know, and uh, packaged and uh, yeah. sold and, to billions of people. And, and for me, really, the core of that big lie, um, which it, it takes various forms, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, socialism means you give up your freedom for higher wages. Socialism means the government controls everything. They take uh, your house, so, all your private property, you take your daughter, your yeah, son. Co communism fails everywhere. It's always the same thing. It's always the capitalist class telling us that they know that they're not necessary. We, the working class now has all the knowledge, all the skill to manage production entirely on its own. But it's the capitalist class saying, you need us, even though you, we, you know that we exploit you, you know we're screwing you over, you still need us because the alternative is worse. Um, they're trying to convince us that they're necessary and, and they're not and they know they're not. Um, and with that point, we're going to bring this discussion to an end. Um, the uh, working class has all of the skills, all of the ability to run our lives. And that means both in politics and in economics. So, Scott, we'll be back next week. Yep. Uh, we hope to see you guys on Sunday. Please, uh, you know, uh, go to the website, sign up for the webinar. We want to hear what you guys got to think. And by the way, tomorrow uh, here, the New York State Communist Party is having its convention. We're, we're going to stream it here on Facebook. So uh, you'll be able to hear us, you know, critique our work, uh, debate the issues, and uh, you might find it interesting. So uh, and that'll be most of the day of, of tomorrow. So I'll see you there. Take care. Take care.